cultural debate between the genders that has been really, it's been going on for decades, but it kind of reached a head during the rise of anti-feminism criticism and content surrounding anti-feminism criticism in 2016, has gone from the phase of arguing about the excesses of feminism and what feminism has done to harm women and harm men, to now the phase of offering solutions. Herein enters the archetype of the trad wife. Now, for those of you who do not know what a trad wife is, for those of you whose minds are unmoored by the poisons of the internet and its discourse and lexicon, I will try to break this down for you very simply. A trad wife is very simply someone, a woman particularly, that takes upon the aesthetic, which is a very important word that you need to keep in your head as I discuss this issue, takes upon the aesthetic of a traditional woman and then endeavors to take on the roles that that kind of traditional woman is suspected to take on. Now, recently, there has been renewed debate about this issue uh, due to Lauren Southern, who is a popular YouTube content creator, a popular influencer who's, who's done a lot of great documentaries that I encourage you guys to go watch. She has she mentioned that she wanted to step into the trad wife archetype, but when she actually did it, she found that she was fundamentally unhappy. Now, there are people that are trying to rationalize this. There are some folks that are trying to actually justify the trad life archetype and try to explain why Southern was not actually critiquing it. And there are other folks that are trying to do something entirely different, trying to call her a liberal, a feminist, or whatever. And fundamentally, this video is not about Southern. Southern is simply one step along a long journey of this debate uh, that I think we should look at particularly because of how different factions have decided to characterize her experience. But my suspicion is not is that, that this, this experience she has is not unique to her. Because fundamentally, the problem with trad wives is not that someone would want to undertake more traditional roles. It's that the idea of a trad wife itself has become an oversimplified, unrealistic notion that some men, in responses to the excesses of feminism, are trying to instill upon their partners and upon their wives. And that is the level upon which I wish to discuss this issue. There are, in my opinion, several dimensions to the issue of being a trad wife. But more importantly, I think that we should also understand the notion of a trad wife is almost entirely a social media construct. Sure, you may say, well, Christian, if you look at how American women in particular were back in the 1950s, couldn't we say that those are trad wives as well? Perhaps you could, but you should also understand that oftentimes general perceptions differ from concrete, specific realities. It is true that there was a certain kind of tradition that women in the 50s followed, but it's also true that a lot of women in the 50s were a part of a thing called swinging culture, where their husbands took them to clubs that were actually widely accessible and popular in America, and they would go ahead and the husband would share the wife with another man, and he would share his wife with him. That was also part of the traditional culture back then. Also back then, part of the traditional culture was excessive alcoholism. That was also part of the traditional culture back then. I keep going on and on and on. And the purpose of pointing out these things is not to critique the past by saying that the past is just a lie and we've all been force-fed it by romanticists who cannot get out of their head. That's not what I'm saying. There's a lot of wisdom that the past has to teach us. And as a conservative, American conservative, I am someone who very fondly believes and holds on to the wisdom of past generations, but I also understand that past generations were not perfect. And, it, and I should always take the advice of them when that advice lines up with first principles and sound moral thinking. And I should disregard anything from the past, present, or future that rebels against first principles or sound moral thinking. So therefore, I am not stuck to the past. I am operating in the present with knowledge of the past, as all of us should be if we're going to be wise about taking the wisdom and importing it to our current realities. So the idea of a trad wife is largely a social media construct, and you've seen this idea percolate in the air uh, with a bunch of women uh, 
after the COVID-19 pandemic, making trad wife content on TikTok. Here are a few videos to that effect of these trad wives doing their thing. All right, and so you see that's happening, and this has caused controversy. Here is a video of a woman actually explaining in her own words why she's happy to be a trad wife. Go. Okay, so I'm here to make a clarification video because of the big controversy going around about the term trad wife and the intent behind the term, as well as the intent behind my channel and what I post. If you are not familiar with the term trad wife, it is a woman who chooses to live a more traditional life with ultra traditional gender roles. So the man goes outside the house, works, provides for the family. The woman stays home and she's the homemaker. She takes care of the home and the children if there are any. The misconception about the trad wife movement, um, it's not really a movement, nobody's pushing it. People are typically just living it and maybe showcasing their lifestyle like me. And we believe our place, specifically us as individuals, believe our purpose is to be homemakers. It doesn't mean that we are trying to take away what women fought for. There are a lot of people trying to make this a sinister thing or put some other darker meaning behind the term trad wife. Nobody is doing that. So let me make something very clear before I begin my critique. If there are women or anyone else that wishes to take a more traditional role in their relationship, I have no issue with that. Whatever traditional means to them. Because obviously this kind of style we're seeing right now is not traditional. In, in universally, because in some cultures, a traditional wife is a woman covered in a burqa who's only, who, only whose eyes are visible. So actually, if you go to a lot of Islamic cultures which, that are based on shame, these women are not trad wives at all. There's something entirely different. <laughs> they're showing their hair, they're showing their chest, so they're not even traditional. But that's a different story, different day. But if they want to do this, that is perfectly up to them. The problem is this. The personal and the political have become intertwined. And people believe that it is now the world's business to know whatever they are doing in the relationship. This has caused both social turmoil and has caused confusion about the proper boundaries between public life and private life, which has then caused the problem of oversharing, where now your entire personal life, including what you do in your bedroom, what you do with your kids or whatever, how you discipline them or whatever, it has to be public knowledge. That is a bad thing. That is a fundamentally bad thing because now there is no secrecy. There is no order. There is nothing that is sacred. Everything becomes a object for mass consumption, for critique. And how do you think, how do you think society gets broken down? It gets broken down by a ruthless critique that does not serve to construct, but serves to destruct. The trad wife phenomenon is part of that broader illness in our culture, the oversharing culture, the sort of performative culture that says that my personal life must be a subject for your consideration. But the fundamental issue with being a trad wife or the affection for trad wives is that it suffers from the same problem that all traditionalist philosophies fundamentally suffer from. And that is, it assumes the goodness of something simply because that particular action or that particular behavior or that particular style has persisted with a, for a long time without any regard for truthfulness or virtue. Trad wives are seen, as I mentioned before, to be a good thing because they stand in contrast to the kind of archetype of the modern woman, whether it be the blue haired, whether it be the sexually liberated, whatever they want to say. The trad wife is so distinct and so contrasting to that. And you will hear a lot of men say in their, and on dating podcasts or even in real life, I've heard this several times, that, you know, I want to marry a virgin. I want to marry a girl that does not have a large, they call it a body count, so on and so forth. 
forth. And so they will rom romanticize and idealize what that should look like. And then they will go ahead and try to assess women, every single woman, on the basis of that ideal without actually asking themselves, is this idea in coordination with the virtue? Is it truthful? Is it realistic? These may sound like generic questions, but they are actually fundamentally philosophical questions because if your expectations are disjointed with reality, you cannot actually have a healthy anything because to have a healthy relationship, you must understand the nature of a relationship and to understand the nature of a relationship, you must understand what is required to make a relationship work. Therefore, if you are looking at your partner with an unrealistic idea, that relationship would not work because you're not even looking at the nature of the relationship, you're looking at your own personal bias. This is the problem with a lot of guys who are frustrated. And by the way, reasonably so. I think there's a lot of things to lament about the state of, of womanhood. Uh, many things, uh, among them being the fact that in some places it is a crime to assert that womanhood is a biological reality uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a distinct uh, category as opposed to being some subjective preference or perception. That's the problem. But you only fix problems that come from rejecting reality by embracing reality and embracing the philosophy needed to be connected to reality. The idea of a trad wife also presupposes that a male-dominated household where the woman has little power or is relegated to a particular uh, section of the household is good and anything beyond that is subversive. Now, as I mentioned, this particular idea is disjointed with the nature of a healthy relationship. Again, if you want to have in your personal life a male-dominated household where the male takes all care of all the things and the woman is to the sidelines, that's a personal preference. If it is consensual, then go ahead and do it. But the moment you begin trying to make a personal preference, a social prescription, I get to go ahead and critique that idea. The problem with assuming that a male-dominated household is the necessary condition of every healthy household is that this idea fundamentally misunderstands what it means to have a healthy relationship. If we look at the pillars of a healthy relationship, the idea of the trad wife quickly, quickly, quickly deteriorates. For example, if one partner, male or female, because by the way, there are partnerships where the female is said to be in power over the male, where the female wears the pants, so to speak. That's also unhealthy for the same reason it's unhealthy if the man wears the pants by virtue of him being a man. Any partnership where that is the case, there can be no healthy relationship. Why? Because one of the pillars of a healthy relationship that is essential is communication. If two people cannot communicate with each other, they cannot build a relationship or build a family. Now, one may say, well, Christian, you can still have communication in a household where gender roles rule. Of course you can, so long as the roles are not inflexible. But if you look at history, look at how the traditional family was in the 1950s of America, the roles were largely inflexible. Not only were they inflexible, but the man was empowered to do whatever he wanted with his wife to his wife, and all she had to do was simply shut up and take it. Now, the overreaction to that was indeed this idea that we need to have a no-fault divorce system where nothing is sacred and everything is transactional. I get that. That was an overreaction, and it wasn't the best thing. But on the flip side, the moment you try to take consent out of a relationship is the moment you disempower the fundamental pillar of communication, and that's the moment the relationship lapses into a tyranny of one partner, male or female, as opposed to a union built on the spirit of cooperation. Therefore, you can't have a rigid structure within a relationship that is inflexible because one side will be in power over the other side. And at that point, it's not a relationship. It is a glorified form of slavery. Whenever anyone in a relationship wants control, they don't want a relationship. They want something else. This may upset some of you, but this is the truth. And it must be spoken because these are not just my opinions. These are facts. So many marriages break down because there's no communication. So many traditional marriages 
in the modern day break down because there's no communication or there's all kinds of things going on. And uh, the, the main reason why some people have been married for 60, 70 years is because they got married in a time where if you divorced or you even questioned what your partner was doing, you were shunned. Which again, had its advantages, but fundamentally led to a broken system that was then overreacted to by the left, which then unfortunately ruined the nature of marriage. It's all very, it's all, it's all very simple. Look at how arranged marriages work. Where in some cases, the family will select the partner for the marriage, for the woman, or uh, the community will, or some, the church will. And arranged marriages, many of them also end in failure, but some of them only end in success because they have to. They are propped up artificially to succeed. There's no communication. There's no health in that. It is solely a social status arrangement brought forth by people who wish to dictate the lives of others according to their desires. The other problem with this kind of rigid form of, of, of gender roles is that it keeps up appearances, right? A lot of people, and this is a historical fact, a lot of people in relationships genuinely care about appearances. How many times have you heard someone in history marrying someone for their status, for their money, or for their appearance? The archetype of the gold digger is basically this. It's basically this. But the problem with keeping up appearances, which is basically the essence of the drag life archetype, wearing these long dresses, speaking in this delicate way that is reminiscent of a past age, the problem with that is it does, it does not imply substance. It does not imply substance. You can have the nicest looking household ever, but there could also be a sense of chaos and disunity within that household. And for so many people, as evidenced by the divorce rates, there is, no matter what the appearances look like. If we want to have a healthy social unit, if we want to have healthy relationships between men and women, if we want to have a society built on the family where those healthy relationships should flourish, the trad wife archetype, which is an archetype fundamentally of appearances, one of rigid inflexible roles, and one that does not comprehend the nature of relationships, that archetype will not help us, it will not get us to that goal, it'll simply continue to further things that have gone unquestioned for a long time, or if they have been questioned, they've been questioned in a manner, not to extract truth from them, but only to extract destruction. I will be the first to admit to you, to throw a bone to the chat people, the second and third wave feminists have wrought enormous havoc upon the American woman and upon the American man, by introducing, introducing subjectivism as a moral system of assessing value, by introducing postmodernism more generally, by doing so many different things, by turning their relationship away from a cooperative union towards a power structure, a power struggle rather, between the man and the woman, where the personal is political, so now what the woman does in the relationship is indicative of what the woman does in broader society, therefore she cannot cooperate with the man, she has to fight the man, that has been enormously destructive, and I think that it absolutely has led to a lot of the problems we are seeing today, whether it be the male loneliness crisis, whether it be the, per, the, 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 the prominence of promiscuous women and, and the proliferation of, of sort of decentralized porn uh, outlets like OnlyFans and that kind of culture. It, it's all downstream of this tension between the genders manufactured by activists. But you can't overreact and manufacture another kind of framework that is only sure to cause a different kind of harm for the problems I listed. So all in all, the idea of a trad wife may sound appealing, but we should always assess good relationships on the basis of the nature of relationships, which are clear and which is set out. And we should look at the principles that those relationships require. And we should weigh any idea, whether it be trad, wife, girl, boss, I don't care what it is, any idea against those principles. Because ideas that are detached from first principles are unfortunately ideas that are just waiting to bring you towards chaos. If you want to do the trad wife thing in your own personal life, go right ahead. But if you want to make it a social prescription, I would encourage you to look closely at what you're doing and to reconsider 
Because unfortunately, this is not the path that is going to help save the modern woman in any case. My friends, if you like this video, like, share, comment, subscribe, do whatever you can. Be sure to donate to me if you want to. My friends, study history, study philosophy, remain morally convicted, and please stay pensive.